In this project, we'll create a status indicator PCB shield for the ESP32 featuring two rows of addressable RGB LEDs, a BME 280 sensor and a push button. We'll program the board to host a web server that displays sensor readings and shows the temperature and humidity range on the LEDs, like two progress bars. The ESP32 will also run a web server with Wi-Fi Manager that allows you to connect the ESP32 board to different Wi-Fi networks without having to hard code network credentials and upload new code to the board. Your board will automatically join the last saved network or if you can't find a network, it will create an access point that you can use to configure a new SSID and password. The LEDs on the shield indicate whether it is connected to a Wi-Fi network or set as an access point. You can find all the resources needed to build this project in the links below this video. This project is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a full-featured printed circuit board manufacturing service to turn your DIY breadboard circuits into professional PCBs. You can get 10 boards for approximately $5 plus shipping, which will vary depending on your country. This PCB is designed with other pins to stack the ESP32 board, so if you want to build and use our PCB, you need to get the ESP32 dev kit do it V1 board, the model with 36 GPIOs. To follow this project with a different ESP32 board, you can assemble the circuit on a breadboard or modify the PCB layout to match your board's pinout. The shield consists of a a BME 280 temperature, humidity and pressure sensor connect to the ESP32 I2C pins, a push button on GPI 18, and two rows of five addressable RGB LEDs each connect to GPIOs 27 and 32. Here's a list with all the parts needed to build this project on a breadboard and a schematic diagram. You can check all the parts and where to buy them on the project page. If you want to customize this PCB, you need to upload the files provided in the video description to the PCB design software. I will not explain how to design the PCB, because it goes beyond the scope of this video. After designing the circuit and wiring all the components, you can go to the layout, make all the connections and route your PCB. Save your project and export the Gerber files. Once you have your Gerber files, you can order the PCB. If you don't want to modify the PCB, you can go to the project page and download the Gerber files. To manufacture your PCBs, I recommend the PCBWay service. You can click the first link in the video description to go to the PCBWay website and open the PCB instant quote page. PCBWay can grab all the PCB details and automatically fills them in for you. Use the quick order PCB autofill parameters. Press the plus Add Gerber File button to upload the files provided, and that's it. You can also use the online Gerber viewer to check if your PCB is looking as it should. If you aren't in a hurry, you can use the China Post shipping method to lower your cost significantly. In my opinion, they overestimate the China Post shipping time. You can increase your PCB order quantity and change the solder mask color. As usual, I've ordered the blue color. When you're ready, you can order the PCBs by clicking the Save to Cart button and complete your order. In less than one week, using the DHL shipping method, I received the PCBs at my office. This time, I also received some gifts. Next, gather all the needed components and solder them to the PCB. If you've never soldered SMD components before, we recommend watching a few videos to learn how to do it. It also helps if you have a soldering iron with a small tip like mine. For the BME280, I've soldered some other pins. You can solder it directly to the PCB if you want. Here's how the shield looks like after assembling all the parts. As mentioned previously, we'll program the board to have the following features. A web server to display the BME280 sensor readings in station mode a visual interface with addressable RGB LEDs. The LEDs on the shield behave like two progress bars showing the range of the temperature and humidity values. 
a Wi-Fi manager. The ESP32 will automatically join the last saved network or set up an access point that you can use to configure the network credentials. Before proceeding, you need to have all these libraries installed in your Arduino IDE. Then copy the code provided and save it. Open your sketch folder. You can go to Sketch, Show Sketch Folder, create a new folder called Data and copy the HTML, CSS and JavaScript files provided. You should have these four files inside the Data folder. Go back to your Arduino IDE and upload the files to the file system. Go to Tools, ESP32 Data Sketch Upload and wait until the files are successfully uploaded to your board. After that, upload the sketch to your board by clicking the Upload button. After uploading the code, press the Onboard Reset button. All the LEDs on the shield will be red because it doesn't have any network credentials saved yet. This means that by default, it will be set as an access point. On your smartphone or computer, go to the Network and Internet settings. And there should be an ESP Wi-Fi Manager network. Connect to that network. Open a browser and go to this IP address. The Wi-Fi Manager web page will show up. Insert your network credentials. You can also insert the IP address that you want to give to your ESP32. We'll leave this default IP address. Click the Submit button and you'll receive this message. After a few seconds, all the LEDs will be in teal color. This indicates that the ESP32 successfully connect to your Wi-Fi network. If you type the wrong credentials, the LEDs will remain red. After this, you can reconnect your smartphone or computer to your local network and type the ESP32 IP address. Now you'll get access to the web server that displays the sensor readings. The readings are updated automatically every 30 seconds. The LEDs on the shield will light up on different colors indicating the temperature and humidity range. We hope you found this project interesting and you're able to build it yourself. Remember that if you don't have the PCB, you can still create this project on a breadboard. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ring the bell for post notifications to catch my next ESP projects. Finally, make sure you visit randomnerdtutorials.com for the complete step-by-step -step instructions and downloadable code. Just click the link in the video description. Thanks for watching.